Hi everyone, welcome to Green Monk TV. We're here today reviewing a Philips Hue, which is a wirelessly uh, controllable LED light. Uh, you can control it using your smartphone. It has a downloadable smartphone application. Uh, it connects to a bridge, so it's controllable over 3G as well as over Wi-Fi. And around the home, it connects to a bridge uh, and it connects to the bridge using the Zigbee protocol. Right now I have it connected to this uh, power strip and in through this power meter so I can see how much energy it's consuming and right now it's consuming zero watts because it is turned off at the switch. If I turn it on, the light comes on obviously and the consumption of the light goes up to five 4.95 watts. 4.9 now, it was at 5 a second ago, it kind of oscillates between them. Uh, it's controllable, as I said, through this smartphone application. So that allows me to change color. The top band here is kind of a whiteness hues. So I can go from blue white, extreme blue white. And now the consumption has gone up to 6.2 on this blue white. Whereas if I switch it over to a more yellow color, the consumption drops down to 4.3. I can then drop it down below that into the kind of colored area, go for a red color if you ever wanted that for whatever reason. The consumption is now at 3 watts and you can go across that spectrum uh, to green, more blue, kind of purpley red, and so on, indigo colors, etc., etc., kind of turquoise. I'll switch it back up to the kind of more whitish. Consumption now is at the regular 4.9. Not alone can you adjust the colors through the application, you can also adjust the intensity of the light. So right now it's at 100. If I slide that slider to the left, it's down to about 20% now and the consumption is going to turn to 0 0.8 watts and slide this back to the right again and up she comes consumption comes back up again okay so that just by itself would be reasonably nifty however this light has got a lot of other functionality built into it which we'll discuss in a second so the first thing to note about this is i've been controlling it over wi-fi from my phone but what if I'm outside of home? Well, we can simulate that by going into the settings on the phone and turning off the Wi-Fi. Now, if I go back into the application, the only way that the application has of talking to the light is using 3G. So anywhere where there's a 3G connection in the world, I can control this light. And you can see, if I pull it down into the green area, it takes a little longer but the light does go green. Put it over to blue, and in a couple of seconds, one, two, three, four, <laughs> it goes blue. And then back up to white again. And one, there she goes. Okay, so it's controllable both in home through Wi-Fi and out of home through the 3G network. Controlling it from outside home, uh, might not seem like a big deal, but the ability to control it from outside home means that when you are out of home, you can check to see if you left your lights on, and if you did, switch them off. Or alternatively, you're coming home to an empty house late at night, you don't want to come into a dark house, before you get home, switch on the lights. In fact, some of that functionality is built right into this application. If you go into the settings area on the phone, you can turn on what's called geofencing. And the geofencing, you can set the zone to be whatever size, small, medium, large, or maximum. Uh, and you can also decide whether or not you want to uh, have notifications around your geofencing. So get a notification on your phone when you exit or enter the geofencing area. And what that means is when you exit or enter the geofencing area, you can set the application to turn your lights on and off. So off when you leave the geofencing zone, and on when you come back into it, so it happens automatically. Another thing the phone ships with are these pre-baked scenes. 
And these scenes allow you to, at the touch of a button, go into a kind of a pre-made recipe of light intensity and color. And they can be anything from this kind of relaxing hammock color through a more energetic jump scene or a relaxing feet up one and so on. It ships with about 12 of them and they're all different colors and shades uh, and you can adjust those. You can see on the right of the slider here there's a little pencil icon which allows you to edit those scenes. You can also create your own. There's a little plus button at the top there allows you to create a scene and you decide whether what kind of scene you want to create and you can choose to share them with the Philips Hue community uh, or not uh, and you can download ones that other people have shared. When you go into the light recipe area of the application you choose relax, concentrate, energize reading, brightness and you have things like the geofencing and that available in the bottom and alarms as well. The alarms one is interesting because when you go into the alarms you can decide if you want the scene to come on at a particular time so that could be early morning or late at night. Early morning you can choose to have it come on instantly or with a three minute fade in or a nine minute fade in. So you have turn on scenes and turn off scenes so the turn on scene is like a you can simulate a sunrise the turn off scene you simulate a sunset and you can do it by day of the week. So back out here I have for example in my scenes different ones set for Monday and Wednesday and others for Tuesday, Thursday and Friday for the lights to come on in our house. One final thing to note about these bulbs is that while their consumption at the moment it's in low light intensity so the consumption is down at 1.8, 1.9 watts. If I turn the light up to maximum the consumption goes up to 4.5 because it's, it's on a yellow light at the moment and if I turn it off at the application as opposed to at the switch. If I turn it off at the application, light goes off as you'd expect, but it's still listening to see if there's a scene ready to go or to see if I choose to turn it on again from here. So if I turn it on again, boom, it turns on, yeah. But when it's turned off like that and in kind of listening mode, it's still consuming electricity. It's consuming 0 0.4 of a watt, which isn't a lot but it is consuming. There's also the bridge that this light connects to, and that bridge consumes a constant 1.6 watts. So in this house, we have three bulbs, which, if left on, would be consuming 1.2 watts plus the bridge, another 1.6, which would be 2.8 watts. And as you add more bulbs, you get another 0 0.4 each time. The way around that, of course, is to Turn it off the switch and it goes down to zero. Advantage, no consumption. Disadvantage, no connectivity. So a bit, a bit of a trade-off in functionality versus electricity consumption, but that's the same with any of these Internet of Things connected devices in the connected home. You can have them on all the time and they're always consuming or not, and then they're not contactable. Thank you for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed the show. Tune in for more of these type shows.